Today, Athena, aka Ember Moon, the former Ember Moon from WWE, is in the headlines because she decided to surprise, surprise, come out and vent her frustrations about WWE. This always happens. It will continue to happen. Every time someone leaves WWE, it's never good. They never have great things to say about it. They might say a couple of good stuff. The money was great. The talent, uh, the, the people around her that she got to work with, they were great. But then we get to creative and Vince McMahon and Bruce Prichard and the lack of direction, how we have a storyline and then it's gone the next. It's it's just bad. It's just bad all around. It's just bad. And it's going to continue to happen until we see a shifting of the guard. It's as simple as that. And I will talk briefly about what she talked about, what was said, but ultimately I, I gotta be honest, y'all need to go watch it for yourself. Now, the full interview last I checked isn't out yet. I think the podcast is out. You can go listen to the podcast. This is, uh, is it Chris Van Vliet? Chris Van Vliet, my boy. Me and him are real cool. But yeah, I would highly, highly encourage you all to go listen to it. It is a great listen. She holds nothing back. She also talks about AEW. I think she is still in talks with them. Uh, as of right now, it's just a talking phase. They don't really have a direction or a plan for her. And why bring her in? I think eventually they will. They have to bring her in. Oh my God, they have to bring her in at some point because she's too good she's been around for i think 16 years she's a veteran and aew is lacking majorly when it comes to female veterans they gotta get ember uh, excuse me athena on that roster and they will it's only a matter of time it actually might be sooner than you think but Let's get to what she talked about with CVV, Chris Van Vliet, and the clip. I'll link it. I'll link it down below in the description, but you can search it on YouTube. It's already, already getting a lot of attention. So, bullet points. I'm just going to read the, the important stuff that she talked about. I'm not going to read the whole... Um, article or, or the whole transcript go listen to it for yourself this is essentially what you should take away from her interview here is what she said that got people talking and I quote I remember going to my makeup artist and going I'm so unhappy I am so unhappy and we would sit there sit through stupid meetings about how, this is crazy, about how we would look sexy and have to dress sexy. And I remember looking at someone else like, I cater to children. I am not about to wear a fish, uh, yeah, fishnet booty butt cheek shorts because we had a two hour meeting about how to be just like Mandy Rose. And that's the new end thing on NXT. They're basically going back to the, the diva ass and tit days. You know, ass and tits is fine. Sex appeal is great. I've always, I've always said it's good for women to have confidence, have that sex appeal, but also be good. You can. You can be both. You can be sexy, but also great inside the ring. Trish Stratus, Lita, Mickey James, some of the best of all time 
were both sexy outside and then also great inside the ring. I understand that in the last few years, there was that period where they went away from women just being eye candy and treated them more as legitimate competitors. Great. Now we're kind of swinging back into that other direction of, okay, back to eye candy. And that's all because of who's running the show. Bruce Pritchard never, never, and he never will, take women seriously. He sees women as objects, as eye candy, as people to look at and have sex with. That's Bruce Pritchard. That's just what it is. And Vince McMahon, he is at a point now where he's making money hand over fist by just existing. We keep talking about Peacock and Fox just giving him money. Just giving him money because. Because they need content. No one's watching TV anymore. And Peacock is a new streaming service. They need more, con they need more content. So they're going to give them money because why try? Why care? So of course your TV show, your TV product is going to suffer when the people in charge don't care. They don't even watch their own shows. Ember talked about how they moved her up to the main roster. They didn't even know she was in a tag team with Shotzi Blackheart. They broke up her tag team with Shotzi. They had merchandise. They were on the front of the WWE.com page. These people in charge don't even watch their own products. And they want to say it's great when they don't even watch it. And then when Vince does watch it, he rips up the script. It's insane. But yeah, I feel her on that. So you want me to all of a sudden stop being what I was trained to be a female competitor and start putting on booty shorts, showing some cleavage and probably doing some promiscuous things. Hell nah, man, that's not her. And not all women need to be that. There are some women who need to wrestle. And there can be women who do both. I think Mandy Rose is great, by the way. Athena agrees. Mandy Rose is awesome. Total package. But that doesn't mean everyone needs to be like her. And getting back to what she talked about, what really bothered her was the decline in not just the women's division, but NXT period after Triple H left. Noticeably, noticeably, it, it was seen by everybody. NXT got worse. This NXT 2.0 stuff, you can defend it all you want. It's nowhere near as good as the original black and gold NXT. And I've given up. I have given up on it ever going back there. It is what it is. But it hurt Amber. You know, it wasn't what she loved. She stopped loving going to work. And then you see multiple times of her being taken off TV one week she's on NXT, the next she's on 205 Live. They tell her, hey, we're going to turn you heel. Here's a storyline. Here's how it's mapped out. And then the very next week, eh, sorry, we're not doing it. And then eventually they let her go. That's just a short version of what she talked about. And she remembers, and again, just reading off the, uh, the transcript here, she remembers when she got released how devastated she was because she wondered, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? What did she do wrong? I'll tell you what you did wrong, Amber. You were too good. You knew you were better than most women there. You didn't show it. You were very professional about it, but you performed it as if you knew what you were doing. See, the problem with people like Athena is that she got over by being herself. She got over without any help. They did not create her. And so therefore, it's almost like a threat to people like Vince who doesn't like when people get over without his input. You know what I mean? If, 
if Vince and Bruce, probably, if they don't feel like they had a part, a hand in creating you, of course they're going to crap on you. That's part of the reason why they hated NXT Black and Gold. And don't give me this bullshit that they were always for it. No. No, they weren't. They buried every single Triple H prospect he pushed up to the main roster. Because Vince did not create it. He has to put his stamp on everything. And it got to a point where Amber Moon said, I'm tired of you doing that. You have no idea what you're doing with me. All of this sucks. None of this makes any sense. I don't know whether I'm a heel or a baby face. We talk about this every Every person that watches WWE has echoed these sentiments and they don't even wrestle. Everyone can see what she's talking about just by watching. Just by watching the show. All this talk about the atmosphere backstage changing, how it used to be a family, now it's just catty banter of women talking shit about other women. Oh, I can understand that 1000% because that's the reflection of the environment. You think Amber Moon, Athena, is the only person that's unhappy with WWE? Please. Please. But yeah, it turned into everything she hated about wrestling. And that's just depressing. Because people think about WWE as the pinnacle, as the land of milk and honey. Everything that they do is to get to WWE. They get to WWE only to realize WWE isn't when it used to be. Some might even question if it ever was that great. It was at one point. But until we change the guard, until the people in charge step down, no, it's going to continue to be a, a cesspool of, of toxic, out of touch, misogynistic, Boomers, sorry, that's, that's the only way I can say it. It's, it is a very unhealthy environment to be. And the only people who are doing well are those, well, that basically, they put themselves in a position where the WWE needs them. A la Roman Reigns. And yeah, even Cody Rhodes. Eventually, Cody Rhodes will get to a point where I'll guarantee you he'll be unhappy. You think WWE is going to continue to push someone like Cody Rose this strong in the next three months, six months? No. They only push him now because he's the first guy to jump ship from AEW to WWE. Eventually, they'll start putting parameters around him and he'll feel like another guy on the roster. Eventually. Just a matter of time. Just a matter of time. And then he'll be the one saying he's unhappy. And we all see it coming. We all see it coming. I hope I'm wrong. But unless WWE needs you for something, you can forget about them ever treating you with respect. Which is exactly why I am so happy. So happy that she's doing her own thing. Athena is doing her own thing. And I'll keep saying it. I pray that AEW picks her up. Don't give me this bullshit about there being a loaded roster. First off, when it comes to the women, it's nowhere near loaded. Most of those women are not even well-trained. They're still green. You got maybe six. Six veterans. Six. You need Ember. You need Athena on that roster. And she can do so much for a lot of people. I pray to God they sign her. They should. They should sign Athena. They will. It'll happen eventually. It's just a matter of time. But look, if you hate your job that much, and it's a job that you, you spent your entire life, you know, perfecting, uh, getting good at, it's a passion for you. Of course it's going to hurt. She was emotional talking to Chris Van Leet about it. So I'm happy she got out. I hope and pray she finds a place. If it's not AEW, I hope it's Ring of Honor. If it's not Ring of Honor, I hope it's NWA. I hope wherever she goes, she's cultivated and treated on the level of a legend. Because Athena is amazing. I still love her. I've always loved her. And uh, I love this quote from her. She says, this isn't about the art that we create 
that we create in the ring. This is turning into everything that I let Raw and SmackDown for. You could just see the pity party starting to form in the locker rooms and the jealousy and the cattiness. Well, why is this person on TV? Why can't you do this? And I was just sitting there like, I'm an adult. I can't deal with this high school bullshit. It would just go into the negative zone and no one would be able to have any type of positivity and everyone would hate the job that we all work so hard to be at. You know what? Especially in this business, when it comes to wrestling, if you hate it, it's, it's got to be the, miser the most miserable existence. You're putting your body through pain. You're on the road all the time, 300 days out of the year, barely at home. You're making money, but okay, most of that's going to surgeries to prepare your, to repair your body and many other things. Like it's, people just think because you're making money, that's it. No, like, yeah, you're making money and you'll get people saying, but at the end of the day, I, I always have this mindset when it comes to people. If a meteor was to hit the earth right now, and we all was to die, would you be able to say you lived a happy life? All the money in the world, you could have that. That allows you to do things that gives you freedom and relief, which is very important. But will you be happy? Will you be able to say you lived a happy life? The thing uh, is thinking that way. I don't think people are living happy lives in WWE unless you're in, the, you're in the top echelon of people who are making the millions. Then of course you're going to be happy. And yes, happiness is a mindset, but if you're around toxic people who don't treat you well, why be there? I'm happy she left. She got out of it and now she's off doing her own thing. So give me your thoughts. How do y'all feel about the interview uh, again the link to it is down below in the description if you want to watch it for yourself but give me your thoughts y'all this is crazy uh, i appreciate you for making me a part of your day i hope you guys are blessed and highly favored and i'll catch you guys next time right here in alex's world a safe space for wrestling fans like you peace